everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Unknown Pro. I am your host, Sam Fisher, and today with us, we've got Amanda Lorenz. Hello, Amanda. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Sam. You're very welcome. I'm so excited. Also, I realized as I was getting ready for this episode that whenever I say your name, I say your full name. I always say Amanda Lorenz. Is that common? <laughs> I've actually, I've had like a few friends say it like that, but really? not, not a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. There's certain people in your life where you just have to say the full name and, and you're one of those for me. So Amanda oh, Lorenz, it God. is. Love it. Um, I'm so happy that you decided to hop on. I, I know we're like, you know, a hundred years apart in age, but I feel like we're from, oh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but we're from 10 minutes apart from each other in our hometowns, yes. which that bonds a person, you know, especially our area. Yes. It's very special. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot, not a lot from over there. Not a lot. So it's cool. We have this, our own little, uh, our little Ventura County world that we've got. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's us. That always. I, and we don't even live there anymore. I don't know about you. My area code is still 805. Um, mine, I actually never had an 805. I had an eight, I have an 818. I know. Whoa. I know. Weird. It's like an ultimate Valley girl then. <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad like has his own business space in the Valley. So mm. we just always had 818 area codes, but my home, wow. my home phone is an 805. There we go. 805 till I die. Just kidding. <laughs> or, I mean like a little, but not kidding. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, fun uh, bonus question. Do you still have a home phone at your parents' house? We don't. Okay. I was going to say that would be kind of cool if you did, but at the same time, I, I memorize it, but we actually, we don't, we don't. <laughs> It's so weird. It just like so, sort of faded out having mm -hmm. the home phone. But all right, obviously on to um, some softball and life related questions other than your area code. Um, before we <laughs> before we do get started, I want people to know if they don't already some incredible things about you and your career. So if you don't mind, take a seat and I'm just going to read some fun facts about you. Okay. <laughs> So you finished at University of Florida in 2019, where you just had an unbelievable, incredible career. Uh, you were four-time All-American, four-time Southeast region, four-time first team, all SEC. Uh, in 2018, you're the SEC player of the year. And after leaving Florida, you're ranked first in the career record books in batting average of a 407 career batting average. On base percentage, 549. You're tied for doubles with 59, and you had 238 walks in your career, which they're like, no, get, rid get her on. I don't want her. Get her on base. <laughs> um, and in 12 other categories at Florida, you're top 10. So you're just scattered all over the place there. Um, after you graduated, you were drafted to the Pride, and you just finished your second season with them. And you also played with Team USA in 2016, 2018. And uh, let's see, you were a finalist uh, for USA Player of the Year, top three finalist as a junior in 2018. And you were NFCA Freshman of the Year in 2016. So uh, I've completed that. How do you, you're such a <laughs> humble, sweet person. How does it feel having that kind of just place in front of you where you're like, you did those things? I'm just, that's <laughs> wild, but I mean, I'm just thankful. I mean, like you, I'm just like a softball nerd and just, mm -hmm. I've always just loved the game with all of my heart. And so I just feel like that shows with the people that are really successful in the sport. It's something that's super common with all of us is that we just really are passionate about the game and doing it the right way. And the game will pay you back when, when you love it the way that it's supposed to be loved. So I just, I just feel blessed. <laughs> that was such, that was such a beautiful way of putting it. And it just touched my softball nerd heart. Cause <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, you're like, you love it, you're around it and you, you succeed because you're, you're out there playing it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's actually something that I wanted to ask you was like, when did you know that you could, this kind of might be a hard question. When did you know that you could accomplish these things or was it something that just started to happen? Um, I think that like, I always had goals. Like when I was super young, I just thought like I was going to play softball at UCLA and just walk on campus. I didn't know like the recruiting process was a, was a thing. I just like thought that was in my path and I was just going to show up and they knew I was there to try out for the softball team. And it was just all going to work out. Like I just always knew, like I wanted to play in college and I just really thought I was going to play at UCLA. Um, and yeah, I just like always had these high goals. I think I was super blessed to have like USA softball, like be so huge during when I was growing up and always wanted to play in the Olympics and got to watch them on their bound for Beijing tour. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing ever. I think yeah. 
it might have even been like my dream of playing for Team USA. It was there before like playing in college. Just I love it. Because the they all of them were just so iconic. Like yeah, just, seriously. Un- just unbelievable. Yeah. And um, so I think I just they made it seem so possible for me because they made it look so easy. And so I just always, you know, had these high goals. And I think when you when you love the game so much, it's so easy to work at work out your goals because you love what you do. And I think that that's why I was able to be so successful is because I just loved being in the cages and being at the field and hitting all the time. And so it was it's easy when you love your work, then it just happens. Yeah. I, I was just talking to, I think my mom recently, cause she, um, she's not like a super sports person or anything like that, but we were talking about when you're doing something and you care about it, it, it like the success is almost a byproduct mm-hmm. where you're, you know, you're like, I'm at the cage hitting every single day. You almost can't help, but become a better hitter. Yeah. So, exactly. and yeah. you look at this and you look at university of Florida is a top program in the country like they have been for so long and the players that have come in there and played and the things that you were able to do to make your mark like it's just I don't I don't know if to you if it feels as big as it is because like to me I look and I see all you know the the women that I played against when I played in college and watching you know my age group playing on tv and all that and then seeing and then you coming in years later and and just putting your name among the greats at Florida. Like, I don't even know if there's a question in that. I think I'm just complimenting you. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like, it's just amazing what you were able to accomplish in four years. Well, thank you so much. I mean, it was just, I I feel honored. I feel like I just am the luckiest person ever to be, to come to Florida and obviously being from California, I didn't really understand like that pride that came with like going to an SEC school. I feel like it's Mm -hmm. just you know, different in the South, like how serious these people take these things and, and how much like pride they have. Like, you know, most of my teammates, like out of the womb were in gator clothes and it was just like, like they were just diehards. And so I feel like when I committed, I didn't really understand. And now I'm like bleed orange and blue forever. And I just love Florida so much and, and will forever like scream, go gators at the top of my lungs. (laughs) So I just feel honored and like, it's so cool to have my name on certain things around the stadium. And yeah. I'm just thankful that I, that I got to be a part of it and, and learn and, and still be around. Yeah. Still get, still get to swing a bat, <laughs> the dream. Right. And that's something I wanted to ask too, because like you said, you know, you're from California and you know, you wanted to go to UCLA, just like pretty much anybody who I remember, I remember thinking like, I'm going to be a Bruin. I'm like, all right, so yeah. let's yeah. get it together. <laughs> but you end up going across the country for college. How did Florida become the school that you wanted to go to? I really liked Florida in the beginning. I mean, I, I went through the recruiting process pretty young and I Mm -hmm. thought Florida's uniforms looked really good. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, I'll talk talk to coach Walton. Like, sure. (laughs) And and he just reminded me so much of my travel ball coach, Mike Stith. And um, I just like, love Mike. And we're still really, really close to this day. And I just feel like I wouldn't be the player or person without Mike and, and the way that he pushed me and challenged me and kind of just elevated me at all times. So Mm -hmm. coach Wong reminded me a lot of him. So I feel like that was probably the main, the main reason that I just felt like I was going to be pushed not only as the player, but like my leadership skills and how I was as a person and outside of the softball field in the classroom, I just felt like it was everything as a whole just seem to fit. Yeah. That's, that's such a cool reason because there's, you know, there's obviously so many reasons to pick a school, but I think that's really like somebody that you're going to be spending every single day with, who's going to have an impact on your life. Like you said, as the full person that you are, not just a softball player. So that, what a great fit. Did, did it scare you at all that it was so far from home or was that something that you kind of liked? I didn't, I don't even think like I fully understood like how far it was and like how, I mean, I'm so lucky in the fact that my mom came a lot. My dad came as much as he could. And and any time that I was like really homesick, like my mom would book a flight and and come see me. And so I was like super blessed with the fact that my parents were here all the time. And, and I think it was really good for me though, because I was just like a huge homebody and kind of, I've been dating the same guy for a long time. And we kind of got together when, you know, people in high school were kind of choosing different things and yeah. so it was like we on Friday nights we were hanging out with my parents or his parents like it was like really like 
we didn't do much. And so I think it was really good for me to challenge myself and be away from my parents and have a new group of friends and, and kind of be away and kind of have to stand on my own two feet a little bit just because Mm -hmm. I was so close and like relied on them so much. And so they still were here all the time, but I think, I think it was good for me to grow up a little bit and be away. That's nice. Do you feel like, even though you were able to do that, like you went and you, like you said, you grew up a little bit, were able to kind of gain a little bit of independence. Do you feel like you still have that core where your family is still like that close and your friends and all that kind of stuff? Yes. I feel like, and I just feel like as I'm getting older, it's like harder and harder to leave and come back. Like Mm -hmm. after the holidays, I got to be home for a little bit and then leaving, I was like still crying like a baby, but it's just, it's hard. And, and I feel like as you get older, family just keeps getting more and more important. You just want to be close to them, but I see them as much as I can. And I'm thankful, thankful that they visit a lot. That is nice. That is really nice, especially because California and Florida are pretty much the same as far as they don't have really bad weather. So any time is a fine time to (laughs) to come visit. (laughs) Yes. That's really nice. And you said too, you, um, you've been dating the same guy for how long have you guys been together now? Like forever eight years, eight years. That is so long. And that's, and you guys have been, this is something that I wanted to ask you about mostly because (laughs) a lot of people deal with it because you've been long distance for, I think you might've posted something like today or yesterday. Like I can't wait. Yes. It not, is he in Michigan now? Yes. He's in Michigan now. He's playing baseball at Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have to say go blue now. It's like really, it's really weird. I have a, like a Michigan sweatshirt. <laughs> I never thought that that would happen. Um, yeah, but yeah, we've been long distance for six. This is our sixth year. Um, yeah, it's still, still going. Maybe that's why it works because he doesn't have to see me all the time. <laughs> so, the- <laughs> so we'll see how this thing goes. When the- this is the last year for reals for, we've been for, saying for, that for real we've been saying that for like three years but seriously so we'll see but yeah that's that's amazing and and I I love hearing that kind of story because a lot of people think that when you pursue something like softball when you know you kind of have to put things on hold mm-hmm. stuff like that it, it doesn't seem like real life has been put on hold in that you've got this great relationship. You're able to make things work. You got your master's degree, you know, you're still playing professionally. So it seems like while you think life might be on hold, life is very much happening. Yeah. I think that's a great point. And I think I'm just lucky in the fact that I had a guy that grew up fast and grew up, you know, with me mm-hmm. when I feel like a lot of men don't grow up as fast. I mean, in us too, like we have to grow up too, but right. you know, I'm I know that you he's always been like, so, so supportive of, of mm-hmm. me and in, in my softball career. And it's always been first and likewise with his baseball career. But I just mm-hmm. feel like we've been really lucky in the fact that he understands me and my goals and, and I understand him and his goals. And like, we've never put our relationship before those goals. We just keep keep pushing on and, and figuring it out as we go. And we'll, we'll always be a constant and, you know, I won't be able to play softball forever and he won't right. be able to play baseball forever, but we'll be, we'll last forever. You know, yeah. and so we kind of just have that, like, we'll handle what we need to handle. We'll see each other when we see each other and, and we'll, we'll roll with it yes. for, for as long as we can. That's amazing. That's a really cool way of putting it. Cause you know, a lot of times you might give up part of yourself to make other things happen and you haven't Absolutely. had to do that. And yes, and Thanks. it helps, it helps that he plays baseball too, because he's like, Huge. I'm out here grinding. I know what I want. I want in baseball the same mm-hmm. way where you know what you want in softball. So that's really, yeah. that's really cool. A little bit of romance for the unknown pro today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I that. Kevin, and, Kevin and I were, ha- well, we're still like, depending on the season, long distance, whenever, one, whenever I go away, mm-hmm. um, and our, our favorite thing to say is always one day. Everything is always one day. So I'm sure you can we say that. that too. We say that all the time. One day. One day. We're like, <laughs> okay, when is the one day? We don't know, but it's one day. <laughs> and then the one day is going to come and we're like, dang, that was so fun. Remember, yeah. remember those days? <laughs> right. Right. Remember those breaks? <laughs> That's I, um, the first year that we were married, Kevin was deployed for seven months. And before that he had to do training. So our first year of marriage, we were together for probably three months of it in person. And people are like, the first year is always the hardest. I'm like, man, it was the easiest. (laughs) We didn't know each other at all. (laughs) It flew by. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Good times. Good times. I I was just thinking good times times. on the tip of my tongue. Yes. So (laughs) 
so obviously it's it's cool to see that you know you have you have a lot of things going on in your life and you're still able to pursue the things that you want to pursue so now you've been playing pro the last two seasons what was that transition like going from being in college playing at Florida um, to now coming into the pro world where you become a rookie or a freshman again yeah <laughs> um, I think that I was it's funny that you phrase it that way because I always talk about it, like I totally expected to feel like a rookie and mm -hmm. feel like a freshman again and I like credit to the pride but I've just like loved my experience so yeah. much especially with those girls I've just it was so so fun for me to be in an environment where everyone was as passionate about the game as me. And it was just like infectious. Like, I just felt like I was learning so much from so many different people. It made instant friendships that like, like solid, solid friendships, which I feel like as I got older, it was like start those started to dwindle too. Yeah. And so I'm just so thankful for, for how passionate they were about softball, how passionate they were about making the people around them better. And I never once felt like a rookie or never once felt like I was treated differently. Totally felt like I had been on the team for years. And, and I just lo loved, loved, loved my, my first year. I had so much fun. I learned so much, got to play with people that I've been looking up to forever. And um, it was just awesome. And I'm just so thankful to be a part of it because yeah. it truly is a lot of fun. Yeah. It, you know what? It really is a blast. Yeah. Like you think about some of the things that aren't so fun about pro softball, you know, you don't make a lot of money or like you know, that part. And then that's, <laughs> that's the main thing, but you know, you, you, there's, there's so many things about it that we're, you know, that we're working on growing the game where mm -hmm. this whole pro softball is a work in progress. But at the end of the day, you look at it and you're like, Oh my God, this was such a fun experience. And that's so cool that that, right out of college, you had that great experience and you're continuing yeah. it. I'm thankful that we're a lot of, we're around a lot of amazing people because yeah. grow the game and, and doing this for, for not as much money as we would like would be a lot harder if we were around some crappy people. Not so, so good. Yeah. At least we're around good humans and we laugh a lot and have a lot of fun because yeah. It would be kind of miserable if it wasn't like that. I don't know. I don't know if all of us would stay around for as long. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's a really good point. If you're out there and you're like, okay, I'm not making any money. I'm not happy. Everything sucks. You're like, okay, let's do it again next year. <laughs> like, Maybe it's time to hang it up. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, that's I'm that that makes me so happy to hear because yeah, there's I mean, gosh, some some incredible people in that organization playing and and getting to like it's still mind blowing. I'm sure you feel this way. Cause I feel like we share this mentality. Like some people that you get to meet in the softball world that you have looked up to and you're just like, hi. <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like so wild for me, like being on a like first same basis with like Natasha Wally and Kelly Kretschmann. It's like, wait, yeah. what? Yeah. Like, I have their numbers on my phone. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Like, that's just like insane. Like I used yeah. to stand in line for their autographs, like multiple yes. times multiple yeah. times I did that yeah and like I got to play with Kelly like what like that's just and I I tease her all the time like I would like show her pictures of me when I was like eight years old like with her and you know yeah. she was mad but it, it seriously <laughs> was the coolest thing ever that is that's so amazing I was gonna ask you when you said about that when they were on the Beijing tour um how old were you in 2008 11 11. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure because I was probably at the same games, but I was like in um, like going to college. So I just <laughs> wanted to make sure <laughs> that we were on the, like I, like I drove myself there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was 11. That... I saw pictures with like literally all of them. Amazing. I was in a pink Hollister zip up. Of course. Really looked the part. Looked yeah. the part. That was yeah. the style. <laughs> um, who, so who was your of like on that team who was your favorite probably ugh, it, it just depended it depended yeah. I I like loved Jenny Finch and I just loved the way that she carried herself mm -hmm. yeah. um but I also like loved Natasha and Lovey and yeah. Jessica Mendoza oh gosh Ke I mean Kelly I mean it's god like, I knew yeah. all of them like I knew I knew everything I was just a crazy, I'm so thankful that like Instagram and Twitter were not around when I was that age because I would be like that annoying kid, like in their DMs that I'll, what are tips that I can, <laughs> like, like that would have been me. 
Yes. So I'm just like so thankful because now they don't like know how crazy I was and like we could be friends now, but, yeah. but I would have been insane. Now you're like playing it cool, but inside you're still like, what are some tips for real? <laughs> yeah. What are your favorite drills? <laughs> what is your favorite color? <laughs> too I would have asked all of it just talk to me. please just talk to me that, yeah. is, there, is there anybody that you haven't met yet that you have been dying to meet or have you kind of met everybody that you've looked up to yeah, and- I think I've met every I think I've met everyone that is so cool yeah it was so cool that's I I think about these times too like I it's so funny we have like we're from the same place and we have the same mentality because like I still think like if I see Natasha Wally like I've known her for years now and like I said have her phone number I could call her if I need her and yeah. I'm still I'm like hi like <laughs> Sam get it together it, like, when I see them like I just see like bright stars like yeah. like surrounding them like they are literally a celebrity like I'm like in the flesh I'm like this is the this is the coolest thing ever like, like, don't I don't mess this can't. up <laughs> don't say anything stupid watch <laughs> watch everything you say yeah, so Nod and smile and you'll be fine <laughs> same I oh I love that I love being able to bond over being just like such a softball nerd man like yes it's, it's the greatest it's the greatest thing that we've got here you know love it what a life what a life and you now you're you're volunteer at Florida so you're helping out with the softball program doing lots and lots of work there um but your life now you're, you're done with school completely your mm-hmm. life is now softball like a dream come true truly that's so great yeah it's like postseason year round like <laughs> like I used to always joke around that like the postseason was always my favorite time in college because school was done yeah and so we didn't have to worry about classes I could be at the field whenever I wanted. We had practice at weird times. Like I just freaking loved the postseason. It was like softball at all times. And now that's my life. Softball at all times. So I really can't ask for anything more. Yeah. So this has been kind of what you've been dreaming about when you started playing was being professional was getting to this point. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't know. I knew that I wanted to stay in softball forever and I didn't know kind of what that looked like. And toward the end of my career, I felt like softball had given me so much and I just wanted to do anything to like give back in my own way. And I felt like I still had things to give back to the sport. And so if I can give information, I feel like that's where I'm at right now, but who knows, who knows what the future holds and and what I'm going to do next. But as of now, I'm liking it a lot. I'm learning a lot and getting to share some of, some of the things that I failed at maybe help other people (laughs) not do the same things. (laughs) And that is coaching. (laughs) so yeah that's cool so so you're the the coaching part of it you're enjoying yes I am cool yeah I think that it's honestly I think I credit the pride in learning from them a lot too Mm -hmm. like learning from others and learning their process like has really helped me coach others like on on our team now like you know because they might not view hitting the same way that I do but maybe they view it the same way Jesse Warren does I I mean I talk about Jesse a lot like she loves to have certain plans and like needs Mm -hmm. a plan to be successful I was not that way Mm -hmm. and so I could use her as a reference of of the way that she used that and I'm just thankful that I got to pick her brain and pick Alex Powers brain and Sierra Romero and Sydney like just so many different people and have so many different um viewpoints and like Mm -hmm. processes that they get to they go through that I get to like tell others about and and maybe that will help resonate with them that's so cool I I I love I was talking who was I talking to this always happens where I'm like I was talking to somebody um (laughs) we were talking about being able to kind of pick pieces from everybody that you've met and apply it to yourself but also apply it to like situations like this you're like how can I help this player because this player might need something totally different than this player so how can I bring the best out of both of them that I mean that's what a great coach is made of. That's for sure. And you're doing that right out of college. I mean, you're only a, a couple years older than some of these girls too, right? I played with a lot of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now you're a coach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is yeah. that something you see? Like you said, I know you said you don't know what, um, what the future is going to hold, but do you think now that you've kind of gotten a taste of coaching, that could be something that you'd pursue? Yeah. I mean, I don't know that coaching in college I don't like I really enjoy it and I'm I'm so thankful to be at Florida because you know it's all I know and all I love so I mean it's pretty easy to to stay where I'm at and I just like you know I'm I'm at 
the place that is so familiar to me, but yeah. um, I, I think I've, I'll always like want to help people get better and, yeah. and you know, if that's lessons or, mm-hmm. or coaching in college, I don't really know, but I know that I yeah. love to stay around the game and help others get better for sure. That's amazing. All right. What was your, what were your degrees in? You, you got your bachelor's and then your master's while you're at Florida. So what were those? I got both of them in sport management. Oh, okay, cool. So essentially yeah. staying around sport. Mm-hmm. You know, that's cool. What, yeah. a school, what a school to do that at too. Yeah. That's it, amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh man, I think about it where, where like I, I love that I went to LMU and I love that I went to a small school, but then I think about the sport opportunity at a big, huge school. And I think that was probably, so, that would have been really cool. <laughs> I think every school just has like their, what they offer and like yeah. you, you had a way different experience that you like your right. favorite thing was pro- probably something that I never experienced you know right. so I just think like every, everybody has something that they took from from their school that was so so special yeah Everyone's where, experience. where else were you like was was Florida when Florida you know came on the table for you in the recruiting process was that kind of it or what were some of the other schools that you were considering um I went on a visit at UCLA Arizona and Florida. I had planned to go to Washington, but I never oh. went. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was probably the main, the main, I think I talked to coach Gasso like once mm-hmm. and that was like about it. Those were like my main. Wow. So super West coast and maybe a little bit of the Midwest and yeah. across the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. That's a diverse experience. That's for it's- sure. Do you, do you see yourself coming back to the West coast in your life or are you staying in Florida? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, California. I mean, my parents are probably going to leave California. It's just so wow. expensive. Yeah. So, and that they are really the only reason that I would go back. So mm, that's true. I don't know. I probably won't, but yeah, it's, it, it, I say that. Wow. Like I didn't move to Arizona, like out of California. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> exactly. It can be done. Yeah. It can Most people in California think that there's just like nothing there, yeah. there is there's life in other states and it's actually great it's, it's fine it's weird I'm still trying to wrap my brain around that fact because I'm like wait California is its own you know like entity like <laughs> it's, it's the only state I know where it is on the map you know <laughs> <laughs> just kidding I know where Florida is it sticks out a lot um but yeah that's that's really cool would they move to Florida I don't know I I would hope so but they also want to be near me and my sister so kind of wherever I don't know that my sister will ever leave California it's like yeah. very much her vibe but um <laughs> they um want to be close to us too so I think it just depends where yeah where I end up too that's cool I realize I'm asking so many questions about the future like every question is like so what's next in five years what's your 10-year plan tell me more <laughs> It's okay. I didn't, I didn't even know this. <laughs> Phew. Okay, good. So we, we fight on. Um, I, I just, I think it's, I think it's really cool because you and I are from the same place. I always have felt like, even though I didn't, gosh, I don't think I met you until, did we meet for the first time in 2016? No, when did we, we met when I was in high school because Tori okay. was coaching. Yeah. Yes. Tori yeah. was coaching. Okay. And so, so yeah, so we met, I, can't remember like the first time, but I know it was at like a game. Like okay. Tori introduced us. That sounds, yes, I remember that. And that's something too in co- in college, in high school, your coach, Megan, she played at Arizona. Mm-hmm. So was that experience good for you with high school ball because she had played at such a high quality program? Yes. So I actually started taking lessons from Megan when I was six years old. Oh my God. Yeah. So like the only reason I wanted to go to Arizona was like, because of her. Amazing. And yeah. And so I like was more like UCLA, Arizona, but like the Arizona piece came in because of her. And I just like, we always had such a great relationship. So it was awesome because I was learning a lot in high school, which I know a lot of people don't have that experience of being able to learn, especially from like a high, high level individual who played, played high level softball. So yeah, I was super fortunate to, to learn from Megan. That still is, close, so yeah, that's so awesome. Cause you, yeah, like you said, you really high school programs sometimes are just a way to kind of like stay in shape and pass the time mm-hmm. during yeah. high school. Pass. But <laughs> I mean, luckily when, when I was in high school, CME was a really good program. So, you know, we didn't win and we didn't win CIF, but like we got close, but, um, yeah. but even still like our coaches weren't 
somebody like Megan who had that experience and, and to be able to give that experience from a personal perspective, not like somebody who, especially like a guy who doesn't know exactly what it means to be a softball player at a, at a yeah. high quality program to be able to share that experience. So what a cool piece while you were so young totally. to have that. Yeah. Especially when like frustrations and emotions are like so real yeah. and like, you know, to get that from like a female perspective that yeah. she understands because like hormones and all the <laughs> things, like I would yeah. not want to coach a high school team. Oh, that'd be terrifying. Girls. Yeah. No. Terrifying. Absolutely not. <laughs> she's a champion. Like she's yeah. like, with grace always. <laughs> yeah. There was many times that I would be like so frustrated or crying and like she knew exactly how to talk to me, talk me off the ledge. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. You think about it and you're like, between the ages of like 14 and 18, you're like, what a roller coaster of a wreck I probably Wow. Wow. (laughs) And not just me, like like everyone else too. Yeah, there's 15 girls. A coach having to deal with that? Uh -uh. Absolutely not. I couldn't do it. I There's no way. No. No. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine one day if for some reason I decide to have children and I have a daughter, what am I going to say to her? I'll be like, rub some dirt on it. (laughs) Like grow up. I don't know. Figure it out. Take a lap around the block. Like get get it together. (laughs) You need a second to yourself. You don't know why you're upset. Well, neither do I. (laughs) Join the club. I've been like this for years. Yeah. I'm 40. I don't know what's wrong with me either. You know, geez. Wow. I just gave myself a nightmare. (laughs) Oh, that's great. I, I loved, I loved Megan. I was, I feel like I was fortunate enough to meet her and kind of have a relationship with her, even though we played against each other. Um, which, you know, we always try, I always tried to beat her, but after the game, I say hi, you know, (laughs) but what a cool, what a cool piece to your story. It seems like everything kind of lined up for you in a way to get you to be the successful player that you are. Um, But do you think, do you think that, I guess this was going to be one of my bonus questions, but now I really just want to ask it now is like, if you had like that little piece, what would be that secret to success? Do you think it would be that passion and that love for the game? Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, I just think that's what sets most athletes apart, but I feel like you can't teach that though. Like, I just feel like people are born like with this love, for, for their craft and, and this passion for the game. And I think like that is, that is the piece that takes like good players to like elite, great athletes is yeah. and, and just competitors is that, is that piece of just loving what you do. Yeah. Cause you just can't replace that work of, of if I'm going to spend 25 minutes on the tee, but it's because I want to be there. Mm-hmm. And it's because I love hitting off of the tee. Mm-hmm. Like that work is going, that quality of work is going to be so much better than someone who is forced to take 25 cuts off of the tee. You're mm-hmm. just trying to take as many cuts as you need to get out of there. It's just not, it's true. just not the same. The intent is much different. That's so true. And I love that you use the word intent because behind everything that you do in the sport or in whatever you're doing, having intent is then going to help you develop help you grow like you said if you're just out there because someone forced you to be out there like what do you what exactly are you doing that I don't know looking at the clock yeah right be like has it been 25 minutes yet (laughs) I took eight swings so (laughs) has has there ever been a point in your career where that that love or that passion was ever in jeopardy or you ever felt like maybe you don't love it as much anymore Yes. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. My, um, my senior year of high school, I tried out for the junior national team okay. and I didn't make it. And I was so devastated. And I just felt like, like my whole life, like, like I told you before, like I had dreamt of like playing for team USA. Right. And like, it was always like me, like working toward that, like mm-hmm. working, like trying to get better because I wanted to be great. But also like, that was always on my mind, like one mm-hmm. extra rep or like running, certain like just doing certain things and I was always think of it so like when I like it didn't pay off I was like this is the stupidest thing ever why would I why would I try so hard yeah work so hard be in the best shape of my life still not make the team yeah it's not worth it and like why am I playing wow. softball if like so I kind of had like a cut like totally reevaluate things and I was just wow. like going through the motions showing up travel ball practice just like 
totally not myself. And yeah. it took like one, it took like a few weeks. And then finally my travel ball coach was like, you need to get your head out of your ass. <laughs> and this is not you. Wow. And you do not play softball and like love softball because of what certain people think of you. And if, if they don't think of you a certain way, like that, you're really going to let them jeopardize, like why you play the sport. And I was like, fine. Like, wow. I, guess, I guess you're right. But and it totally, I totally needed that moment and needed that talk. But for like, there was like a good, like three weeks to a month where I was like, totally in a funk. Like, this is wow. stupid. I'm, I was just was t- so off. And I like, how dare I give other people or like one decision, like the ability to change me that way. Like, that's yeah. like so terrible, but I totally like, I'm so thankful for it. Cause yeah. it switched me, like totally centered me and found my love for the game again and felt like I fell in love with softball all over again. So I, I'm, I'm thankful for it truly. And when you think about it and you're sitting here this, you know, senior year in high school, however many years ago that was now, and you say three weeks to a month, looking at it probably feels like that was n- no time at all. Yeah. But when you're going through it, you're probably like, it felt like an eternity. Oh, it felt so long, especially for someone who like has loved softball with all of, all of their being their whole life. Right. And made it their whole entire life. Like it was never my identity, but it was my identity because I, because I loved it and I wanted it to be not oh, really, hell yeah. not really like a burden of like, I identify as a soft, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know we talk I a know lot about exactly. that. Like I'm, I'm more than a softball player, but I made it that because I loved it. Like I, I wanted that to be it. And I kind of like, but that's when it was toxic when I just let it like engulf me in, right. in, in a negative way. Right. And then learning that as a senior in high school, learning that, you know what, people can have whatever opinion of you as a player as they want to have. How do you think of yourself as a player? Exactly. And that see, it sounds like that's what you kind of discovered where you're like, okay, so they didn't want me to be on that team. Well, okay. So what? I'm still able to swing the bat. I still can throw the ball so I can go out and do what I love and exactly. nothing can, that part's untouchable. Mm-hmm. So that part I think is cool. I, I, I hear that you hear it a lot of people losing the love for the game and, or depending on situations and it makes you kind of question how you feel about the sport or whatever. But when you, you know, you hear these stories and you think about it where you're almost sort of like thinking about yourself of, do I love, like, how do I see myself? Not so much about the sport where you're like, wait, yeah. deep down, I still love this sport, but I was hurt by other people's opinions of me through the sport. Yeah. So I think that that's amazing. Separating the two. Exactly. And I, um, I relate so much to you talking about kind of like identifying yourself as a softball player because you know, people, you know, people say like, I'm not what I do. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, it's kind of a confusing part for me because like you said, you're like, I love it so much. I, I want to be seen this way. Like Mm -hmm. Sam, Sam on the field is, you know, goes for what she wants. She's a hard worker yes. a player. I'm like, why wouldn't I want to identify like that? Exactly. But I feel like we're too much too often, like we get caught up in the successes and the failures. And I feel like that's where now, like, like when we say like, I identify as a softball player, people automatically think like that might be in a negative tone because we identify more in those like successes and our failures. And, but it's like, I, I totally agree with you where that's that's where my mind goes to like I the successes failures like those I go to like the teammate I am or like yeah. the how like passionate I am how honest I am like mm-hmm. on the field is maybe a little different than I am off of the field and that's why I totally agree with you that's where my yeah. that's where my mind goes to that is that too that's a little separation where you're like I don't define myself as a success or a failure as a person mm-hmm. but of the qualities that I am when I'm on the field like yes that's that's who I want to be like mm-hmm. Sam out there is awesome and her braid looks good like <laughs> that's how I want to live <laughs> period I'm just you know <laughs> done and that I love that you bring that up too because um I, I texted you too after your last at bat after your last game at Florida and you just tagged this ball to center field. I'm sure you remember. Yep. Yep. You're living it. Um, and you knew it was the last step bat and you knew that, you know, that you, sorry, <laughs> you go into the dugout and your team is swarming around you. And I, I, I feel like I'll never forget this moment because you said, let's focus on the game. We'll do, we'll deal with this after the game. Mm-hmm. And I think that was, I, I, I was so not taken aback, but like, I admired that so much about you because 
it's emotional. Like it sucks. It sucks ending your college career and that you hit that ball. That was one of the hardest balls. I'm sure you probably hit. And yeah. I'm like flailing things around my desk right now. <laughs> and you were able to say, we've got, we're playing a game right now. Like someone else is up to bat that that's a, that's a team player like to its core right there. Awesome. So what well, a moment. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Obviously in the moment, I didn't really, you know, it was just the, my first reaction of, of what to do. And I think that I, you know, I tried my best to be as yeah, the best leader that I could be and the best mm -hmm. teammate that I could be. And I felt like that was just my first reaction of what to do. Looking back on it, I'm like, it's really cool. And yeah. You know, and also I'm just so thankful that like my teammates knew how much that moment meant to me too. Yeah. Like, right. I think like that season was so wild. Like we shouldn't have even been at the world series, like, <laughs> not have even been there. So just like in with how, like how many things didn't go our way and didn't go my way and didn't mm -hmm. like, was not the perfect senior year that I envisioned for sure. Um, but I think it was really cool to like, see the love for my teammates that immediately, you know, they were there and wanted to give me a hug and, yeah. you know, pat me on the back during that time. So I think that meant more to me than, than I probably looking back, like I see, maybe people that I didn't realize that would be the first one to be there to give me a hug, like in that yeah. moment. So I thought yeah. that is really cool that, that I will remember like forever. I love that. And a lot of, I mean, number one, a lot of that comes, you're, you're a leader on the team, you know, those, those important things, but you, you exude how much you love the game and how passionate you are about it, how much you want to win, you know, and how much you're there for your teammates. So it's almost like, I can imagine if I'm in that dugout, like, and I see you, and I know how much this all means to you, like wanting to be there for you in that, you know, in that situation because of just how much you can tell how much it means to you. And I think yeah. that's, oh, it was special. how admirable. I, I just, I, I remember I was at my grandparents too. And I like, yeah. my grandparents don't turn on the TV for anything other than like, um, if they, they learned how to do Netflix and they watch like cop shows now, British cop <laughs> shows. That's They're amazing. Online. But I remember yeah, the World Series is on. I'm like, Grandma, Grandpa, like I'm excited to have dinner with you guys, but like, can we turn this game on? And I remember I was I'm, I was at their house, and I remember seeing that moment. And I, what's cool, obviously for me being a softball lover, um, that moment meant a lot to me to see that, especially knowing that you were going to go into the pro game, pro game, you're going to continue your career, you're you know, you're you're a household name for a lot of people in, in softball, but thinking about what that probably meant to a lot of young kids watching too, like, Oh, she's really, you know, she's really sad, but like the game's still going on, you know, like that you, you don't realize how much you're teaching in that moment until, you know, someone tells you like this, like, Hey, you taught people a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and right. Like as I was going up to, to hit, I don't know if you remember this, but the catcher for Alabama, Reagan Dykes was actually one of my friends. Aww. And, um, so she like, before I got on the box, gave me a hug and yes, like, I do remember that. Was, I'm going to like tear up thinking about it. It was so <laughs> cool. It was so cool. I was like, like, and she like said some really nice things and, and gave me a big hug. And I was like, I told myself I wasn't going to cry during this at bat. Like, don't make me cry. And she totally like made me cry. And I was like, but looking back, there were some people that like, tweeted some pictures and I got to see some really cool pictures of that moment. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like but, that like gave me goosebumps because, oh. of this. you know, like she's a great friend and a great person. Yeah. They oh. were killing us and like, obviously they were going to win, but like <laughs> I still wanted to win. Yeah, so it was still like in that moment, to, it was really cool because, that and I feel like that kind of stuff is like so special in softball. And I feel like is yeah. really really like sacred in our sport that a lot of totally. like other sports don't really get to experience something like that. I was, Absolutely. it was, really cool. that is, yeah, it, gosh, what, what a time. Like, uh, are, you, are you okay? Cause I know. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a first time for everything on the podcast. Okay. And this oh my God, is, am I the first crier? So sorry to break that to you. Oh my God. <laughs> That is so embarrassing. No, Guys, I haven't relived that moment. I've just been shoving that down for a long time. Leave okay. It, it, had, it had to be talked about. And so it's very raw still <laughs> two years hey, later. That's, and it's just how it is. I'm it is. That is, you know, I, I'm so happy that I'm the one. And you know what? I, I think 
I'm not kidding. I think about that moment every now and then thinking about being a team player and stuff. And so, um, <laughs> the passion comes through, whether it's smiles or tears, people, like it does always, <laughs> always being me over here. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm so, so, so happy that you shared your feelings about that shared that moment because that what a what a big one and and you're someone who's still in the game you're still going to be in the game now you're coaching and impacting those who are coming up through um in the college game so it's just what a what a whirlwind and i think about you now are you 23 i'm 23 yeah i'm about wow. to be i'm about to be 24 Ooh, all right you're still in your jordan year about to go in your kobe year so it's good times for you ahead but what do you think now, now this might, this might be a hard question, but like okay. thinking about the way that you've, you know, played your career, how, how things have turned out. What do you think little Amanda Lorenz, you know, like six, seven, eight year old little Amanda Lorenz would be thinking right now, looking at you. Badass. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell I think, yeah. yeah. I like, love that. That question after the tears are already fresh. I, I wasn't going to ask it, but that I figured rude. Yeah, like I, I like agree. didn't even give me a second. No, like, I thought like myself were like, you know, they came flooded in like the second you said that, like, really? Listen, I'm kind of sorry, but I'm, for this. that's not, that's not where we were going. This no, is not where, I, what I thought was going to happen. No, everyone thinks of me as the funny person, but really I just kind of <laughs> dig in deep to the most emotional part of your life. So <laughs> Now that we all, now that it's out there that I'm really like a fake. <laughs> Sam asked me, is anything off limits? And I didn't think that this was going here. And I should have went like immediately here. Like, do not make me cry. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Like she should have known that, but it's my fault because <laughs> I did in fact, think it was going to be funny and did not think it was going to get sentimental like this. this I didn't think that. And that's on me and that's on me and my fault. You know what? I'm going to, I had the opportunity to tell you, no, you did. You did. You could have said, Sam, don't make me cry, but you didn't. So I'm going to take 10% of the blame and you get the other 90. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry, but I figured since the floodgates were already open, it would be a really good question to just while we're in the emotional realm. So Gosh, it was a really good question. And but that's I, a really good answer. Thank you. But, you know, thank and you. I promise I'm not going to make you cry anymore, but I, <sighs> this is what passion does to you people like this is and it's okay it's, it's okay great. it's okay to cry when you're happy and to cry when you're sad like <laughs> we don't know why we're crying sometimes yeah. but it happens remember what I said about hormones in high school <laughs> and how I would never want to deal with me like same now this is how even when you're in your early 20s you're still yeah. don't know why you're crying like yep. still still crying for no reason <laughs> I just it's when you think about it, you're like, man, I love softball so much that it makes me cry when I'm happy. <laughs> like, That's sick. What like a I, life. What, I think I need to call my therapist. Hold on. <laughs> hey, like, am I okay? Oh, I'm happy? Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Not normal. No, no, but in the best, in the best possible way. But I think, I think on that, on that note, I don't want to make you cry anymore. But, oh, um, I'm good. I I'm recovered now. You can oh. ask me that question again if you wanted to, and I could do it with no crying. <laughs> yeah. That would take out the authenticity though, you know? Yeah. And to be fair, some people listen to this where they watch it on YouTube and can see, and some people listen to it just with the audio. So people might not, you know, see you, you. Can hear it you can hear it yeah that's okay though I I oh my I, god for one second you were trying to make me feel better and then I like totally said no and you were like yeah you're right like yeah hey. that's my bad you know we, <laughs> at this point it is what it is and we just have to ride the wave man ride oh my the gosh, wave. I'm crying that's funny. <laughs> but no I that that this is the point this is why I started the podcast I kid you not it's to dig deep into look at how successful you've been in this sport and look at all the ups and downs and lefts and rights and loop de loops and everything to make you get to this point of sitting here and having these conversations is that someone somewhere is going to look and see Amanda Lorenz talking so passionately about these moments and, and, and want that, you know what I mean? Like whether it's about softball, whether it's about wanting to be a doctor or, you know, being anything like, yeah, yeah. yes freaking go for it let's do this like inspirational like this is the stuff that you know 
hence hence the name of the podcast is the unknown pro like so much of this you know florida people know you in the softball world and then there's so many people that don't know about softball players because yeah. we're such a cute little tiny world yeah you know but and i think like back to that like i think now like unknown unknown pro but i also feel like we grew up in a time where like being a softball player like wasn't the coolest thing like yeah that was not cool to like tell my friends <laughs> at school that I couldn't go hang out on the weekend because I had a softball game like yeah. that was embarrassing it was <laughs> embarrassing like my friends did not understand yeah like, especially like in elementary school middle school and even in high school there it was mm -hmm. just like not the cool thing to say yeah and I feel right. like now like social media and just like how like female athletes have just exploded it's like yeah. so freaking cool to be a yeah. female athlete Hell now yeah. like and it's just celebrated like every age where I just feel like well my parents celebrated me like right you know, like, I was all, I always felt celebrated by my parents but I didn't always like feel seen and understood by my friends yeah growing up because again like softball wasn't cool you right. know right. and I just feel like now now it's just so cool like and it's yes. so celebrated by everyone to like be a female athlete and and do what you want to do. So I just yeah. think it's so cool now. Like you will be the last like unknown, like unknown pro name. Let's you know go. what I mean? Not, no, you are, you are, um, you are very much known, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like yeah. of like these, like coming up, like they will no longer have to worry yes. about that because it's just so much more celebrated now. Yes. And that's the goal, man. Like leave it better yeah. than you found it. That's 100%. absolutely the goal. And it's, it's empowering too. You know, like I, I can think, I, I can think of so many times of people being like, all you do is softball and me being like, yeah, why? <laughs> They're like, oh, and then that's that, that's that. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> do you want to play catch? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> but you're, you're, you're so right. Like there's, there's things that people don't understand. And now yeah. it's to a point where you're like, you know what girl go out and do your thing you grind yes. you you achieve you accomplish you create yes. goals. Mm. go wow. get it girl now i gotta go i want to go into the gym like i'm gonna go achieve oh, fired some goals. Up. Let's, yeah let's i'm fired up but <laughs> i amanda thank you so much for for sharing for for chatting with me for laughing and crying with me and <laughs> and you know it's it's this has been just such a great conversation and so pure and I I love I love that you said yes when I asked you to be on here oh my gosh of course there's no hesitation I was actually wondering what took it you so long <laughs> shut up <laughs> I was like when am I going to be a guest on the unknown pro yeah you're like hello we live seeing all my friends get invites I felt like it was like the party that like you really wanted to be invited to so you would just like peek in like you saw the lights were on and you're yeah. like I want to knock I want to knock I want to just open the door <laughs> You're like, I'm here. Thankful that you invited me in before I had to knock on the door. Yeah. Cause they talk about embarrassing, you know, Sometimes. it was about to happen. <laughs> I saw one more friend show up on there. I was like, okay, Sick of them. Yeah. I'm just, I, I gotta, I gotta be invited to the party. Yeah. And you know what? Welcome. What I'm, I'm so happy that you came. It's a great party. And I'm glad that you wanted to be invited to the party because yes, I did. That, that makes me feel so good. Cause this has been such a fun experience being able to, you know, have this microphone and like ask questions and <laughs> I've learned so much, you know, there's people who I've known for years and years and years. And they tell me these things that I had no idea about their path or their, you know, experiences. And I'm just like, most of the time I see you're like, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you also are just so awesome and so sweet and always have just an ability to let everyone just spill things in oh, such a safe place. Thank you've you. Also like that, so. Wow. Is it hot in here? I'm sweating. <laughs> now it's my turn to cry. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to make you cry, Sam. <laughs> I'm lying. I just want to see you cry. <laughs> Honestly, turn on Finding Nemo and I'll cry immediately. So that's, I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. So if you, like, if I see a text from you later, I'm not going to open it because I know it's going to be Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> like the saddest clip in the movie. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she got me. She got me good. <laughs> but this has been, I mean, such a special episode of The Unknown Pro. Amanda Lorenz, you've been an incredible guest. You're an incredible person and an amazing, talented softball player that you, you are a gift that keeps on giving to the softball world. So thank you for being you. Thank you for talking wow. to me. And, uh, Maybe I'll see you in person when, when, oh yeah, hell yeah. 
maybe maybe we'll get to see each other in person one day soon hopefully we can only yeah. hope we can only What's hope but COVID? hopefully we'll see everyone soon in person. everyone warm hugs for all in a safe <sighs> environment <laughs> i cannot wait all right my friend until next time